Hey there all, welcome once more to our YouTube channel. It's a massive honor for us to get to walk you through the 10 most interesting advanced level mechanics problems in physics. Let us dive right in with problem one. So there you go guys, here's the question. This is the problem we're about to solve. You can pause the video right here, attempt the problem yourself before you play the video to check out what we have done in the following part. All right. So a light string carrying a small mob of mass that hangs from the roof of a moving vehicle. What can be said about the motion of the vehicle if the string hangs vertically? Well, if we have a moving vehicle and then, well, a hanging string still hangs vertically, then that tells you that the resultant force on that particular system is zero. And so the system is not accelerating. And so that car must be moving with a constant velocity or you say constant speed in a straight line. So there. Um, this is the vehicle moves in a horizontal straight line from left to right with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. Showing a sketch the force acting on the bob. Well, again, in this case, the vehicle now has a resulting force acting on it because there's a resulting acceleration, right? So, according to Newton's second law, whenever you have a resulting acceleration on that system, there is a consequential resulting force. And so, uh, because the system has a resulting force, the bob is going to experience a backward force on it, right? So it's going to drift backwards like that. And so you now have, there's a possibility of now resolving this tension because there's a bob, there's a string, and so there's a tensional force in this string. We can resolve this tension into, again, the horizontal component is sine theta and the vertical component is equals theta. But again, remember that the, this bob drifts backwards because of the acceleration of the whole frame of reference. And that acceleration is basically the acceleration of the car, which is 2 meters per second squared. So the resultant force on the bob becomes the mass of the bob multiplied by the acceleration of the whole frame. And so you get uh, ma here, and then the weight of the bob is just mg. So we can use basic Newton's laws uh, to understand that, well, since the bob does not move in the vertical plane, then this equals theta must be equal to mg. So that is, so those forces are balanced out in that direction. And then the bob does not continue to move like that. So what we have is sine theta to be equals to ma. So we can, of course, ratio these two equations. So equation two by equation one, we have E goes away. We have tan theta there to be equal to A over G. And so what is our A? Acceleration of the system is two meters per second squared. What is G is 9.8. Uh, our theta will just be tan inverse of that. And so our theta is 11.5 degrees. So this bob would drift uh, from the vertical at an angle of 11.5 degrees if the car was accelerating at two meters per second squared and the mass of the bulb was exactly this okay guys let us go to the part c so the part c says the vehicle moves down an incline making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal with a constant acceleration of three meters per second squared determine the angle which the string makes with the vertical okay i really love this part c guys i hope you can take out your time to really try it out and see if you get the same result as i'm going to get so if you try it out the first time just get your answer and then comment under the video all right so those will be the people that i know that right, have actually attempted this part c like I, I love this problem because of this part c um so let us evaluate what is happening so this is now our vehicle moving down this incline at a particular acceleration three meters per second squared now but now remember that our interest is with the bob what is happening with the bob so if the vehicle now moves down an incline of course the resulting force on the bob will be up the incline right so you now realize that all right i'm just going to resolve this acceleration here now normally for this car the acceleration is going to be downwards so i now resolve the acceleration the vertical and the horizontal to be a sine 30 and a uh shit. okay this is a cos 30 sorry guys this is supposed to be cos 30 so i can just correct that with cos instead of sine cos uh don't mind don't mind how terrible that is so that is cos cos 30. Um, so yes, uh, so we have we have resolved the acceleration here. But again, with respect to the bob, this acceleration goes upwards. So again, just just take note of the direction of the acceleration there and the, and its components in acceleration with vectors. We have to take note of that. Now again, uh, the tension in the string we can resolve that into vertical and the horizontal. So we still have our t sine theta here. We have still have our t cos theta, and then the way we still acting downwards. But the real key things here are what is happening with the acceleration. Okay, now we are just going to go ahead and then I'll resolve. 
in the vertical, in the horizontal direction, now at C sine theta is pointing horizontally, will be equals to what? The horizontal resulting force on this ball. And what's that horizontal resulting force? Well, this is the horizontal resultant acceleration on the ball, A equals 30. So multiply that with the mass, you get the horizontal resulting force. So you now have M A equals 30. Clear, guys? Perfect. Now let's resolve the vertical direction. Again, the vertical direction here, watch what is happening. You first of all have C equals theta, and then you have mg. But there's a resulting acceleration in this vertical direction. In the, in the part B, there was no resulting acceleration in the vertical direction. But here, there's a resulting acceleration. Look at this. So you have to be very careful. So this C equals theta, if I multiply, this is just acceleration, but these are forces. So you have to multiply this guy by m, just like you did with this m a equals theta again to get the force. So this is a sine 30. If I multiply this by m, then I'm going to get the resultant vertical force acting on this ball. So, so um, I'm going to now say, okay, this is our T equals theta is pointing upwards. So plus the other upward force will be m a sine 30. But if I don't want to add it immediately, then I can send the m a sine 30 the other way, which is why you see this negative the other way. Because if I had to just bring this one, you would have T equals theta, then plus m a sine 30, because those two forces are pointing in the same direction. Then both of them will not be equal to mg because mg is the only one who's going in the downward direction, which is what you have here. Or you now say uh, c equals theta, which is the upward force, will be equal to mg, which is the downward force, but minus ma sine theta because this guy is not downward, but it's also upward. So you, you subtract this downward force from the upward force, and then it gives you c equals theta. So, anyways, you choose to um, understand it, that's fine. So, again, I'm just going to say so you can preferably take all the upward forces and just add them up. To give you the downward forces so c equals theta you add it up to what m a sine 30 and that should be equals to mg you could do it like that it gives you the same thing um so now we can basically just uh, uh, divide these two equations so equation one by equation two gives us t goes away so sine over cos gives us tan theta but then the right hand side becomes a little different from what we had in d so the m's will cancel out look at this m here we can factor out all these m's here so the m cancel out so we are left with a equals theta to 30 up here then we are left with g minus a sine 30 now here perfect so we can write our a is 3 because the car moves downward with the acceleration of 3 meters per second squared so we now have that our g is this uh of course our calculator takes over and then our theta is 17 degrees guys oh i so love this problem i so love this problem um, I hope you really enjoyed this uh, mechanics problem. We're going to bring in nine more mind-boggling ones. Just leave us uh, your thoughts in the comment section down below. Tell us if you found the question really interesting and if it challenged you uh, and if you laughed, if you, maybe you understood the resolution of the forces of this. Anything you did not understand and you would expect us to slow down in the following video, please let us know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. <music>